underscoring the promise and peril posed by artificial intelligence. We have seen what happens when technology outpaces regulation. Tuesday's Senate hearing started with a voice that sounded like Senator Richard Blumenthal, but wasn't. That voice was not mine. The audio was an AI voice cloning software trained on my floor speeches. The words written by AI program ChatGPT. The man behind ChatGPT, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, is now pleading with Congress to regulate AI before it's too late. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. AI's peril is far more than stealing a singer's voice and composing a new song or drafting love letters and college essays. Researchers warn it could create counterfeit humans, steal identities, spread fake news and medical advice, undermine elections, democracies, even start wars. And there is wide agreement that humans could soon start losing their jobs to AI. How do we find meaning in life if uh, the AI could do your job better than you can? Billionaire Elon Musk, who helped fund OpenAI, is among hundreds of tech leaders calling for the industry to hit pause. Last night, he talked exclusively to CNBC's David Faber. There's a strong probability that it will make life much better, and, and there's some chance that it goes wrong um, and uh, destroys humanity. Hopefully that chance is small, but it's not zero. For years, Hollywood has envisioned a dark future controlled by computers. What am I? While iRobot may be extreme, the man known as the godfather of AI, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, recently left his job at Google to issue a stark warning. I think it's possible that people are just a uh, passing phase in the evolution of intelligence. People are a passing phase. In other words, computers will take over. Yes, that's possible. An existential threat to all of us. Listen to where that warning is coming from. These are the guys who invented this technology. And there's growing bipartisan agreement in Congress that AI needs to be regulated. But the U.S. is far behind Europe, where new AI guardrail laws are moving towards passage. Riskier apps would be facing tougher oversight in Europe. EU laws would move to protect children, ban scoring people based on their behavior, and remote facial recognition, using that in stores, for example. So this is really a brave new world, you guys. It, it really is. <laughs> Um, and a scary one, too, in some ways. Let's bring in NBC's yeah. tech correspondent, Jacob Warb. And Jake, I mean, everyone's remarking, oh, here the industry mm -hmm. itself is saying, please regulate us, regulate mm -hmm. us. But, you know, a, a number of scientists, and including now um, the former godfather of AI, mm -hmm. have said, well, let's just pause yeah. for a moment. Let's hit the brakes for a moment and not develop it any further until we really get a mm -hmm. handle on this. So they're saying regulate us, but they're not saying, and we'll pause while you do. Well, that is right. I mean, you guys, there is this sort of sense, experts tell me, that, uh, you know, that these CEOs want to create that this is somehow inevitable, right? That it's like the weather and it's just going to roll in and we have to deal with it, start stocking up on umbrellas. But, uh, uh, you know, experts have been talking to me about really the, the very good likelihood that an open democratic society like ours can decide what it deploys. It does not have to go forward with something like that. Whether that needs to be something like a six-month pause, like you mentioned, or or perhaps, uh, you know, some other form of regulation entirely. I mean, you know, we have, uh, you know, the, the, we would all be sitting here smoking cigarettes if it weren't for the efforts mm -hmm. of regulators and academics and trial lawyers to sort out the harms of cigarettes. I'm not comparing the dangers here to say that AI is as dangerous as cigarettes, but we as a society have some choices, experts say, and we do not simply need to let this thing roll into our lives. Well, Jake, you said they've been saying when this tech goes wrong, it goes very wrong, and I don't really understand what that means. So if you to explain like what's the worst case scenario that can happen if this thing just goes flooding through society well, the short term and the long term, right, is a way to think about it. So in the short term, the immediate threats that people are worried about is, you know, first of all, just sort of the end of factual evidence, the, ev the end of being able to trust our eyes and our ears when you hear uh, the president speaking or you see a photograph that looks like something uh, out of a news camera, right? Those sorts of things are currently all we're using off-the-shelf AI easy to fake. So in the short term, we're talking about the sort of general loss of trust on the 
the eve of something like the 2024 election. In the long term, of course, we're talking about, you know, losing all sorts of skills, perhaps coming to rely on AI to write our love letters for us, write our resumes for us, decide who gets a job, who gets a loan, who gets bail in this way that will, you know, maybe due to our ability to make those sorts of decisions, what, you know, relying on something like, a, you know, a map on your phone has done to our sense of direction. And then, of course, there's this long, long term thing that everybody is worried about, about the idea that somehow artificial intelligence will become AGI, artificial general intelligence, and develop a mind of its own, you know, enslave us all. We've seen those movies, right? That is maybe not the thing that, that you know, experts say to me that that's ne not necessarily the thing to worry about as much as these short term dangers that we need to get in front of right now. It's so scary, though. I mean, I, I mentioned again Jeffrey Hinton. He created, helped to create the technology behind AI. He just left Google. He said to the New York Times, the idea that this stuff could actually get smarter than people. A few people believed that, but most people thought it was way off, and I thought it was way off. I thought it was 30 to 50 or years, even longer away, perhaps. Obviously, I no longer think that. Yeah. What is the thing that happened, like, in the last 6 to 12 mm -hmm. months that suddenly mm -hmm. took this from, oh, AI, it's nice, it makes our, you know, our Google mm -hmm. search a little better, to real experts with skin in the game who are working mm -hmm. in the field who help birth this technology say, whoa, 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 mm -hmm. whoa, we got to press the brakes here. Right. Well, the difference between then and now is essentially a new piece of technology. I mean, it's things like something called a transformer model. We don't have to get in the weeds on this, but basically, once upon a time in AI, you had to train things very slowly, and it took forever, it took billions of dollars and you know thousands of hours to train a single piece of AI to make a decision, pick a pattern out of data. Then, just a few years ago, these transformer models made it possible for you to suddenly just pour the internet through these systems so that they can and just pick up the greatest hits of our taste in art, our taste in music, how we write letters to one another. It's that capability that has suddenly created all of these large language models that you're seeing OpenAI and Google and Meta debut. And those are what is setting off this concern because they're concerned now about the possibility of what we're seeing as emergent behaviors. That's what they talk about, where basically these things are beginning to do things that the people who made them did not expect. It's that element of surprise that has people worried about the future and has everybody talking, of course, yesterday's hearing all about regulation you guys it's a conversation we got to keep having mm -hmm. jake thank you very much all right thank you jake hey thanks for watching don't miss the today show every weekday at 11 a.m eastern 8 pacific on our streaming channel today all day to watch head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here